breaking news guys there are world record levels of copium being taken right now by some sections of the dragon ball fandom now obviously the official chapter hasn't fully dropped yet by viz but there has been a translated version of chapter 103 released obviously if you want to support the official drop which i will eventually will as well even though i have admittedly read the full leaked version so i know everything that happens in chapter 103 i know every sequence of events that happens i know all the dialogue that supposedly happens unless some of that changes when the viz release happens and obviously other prominent translators will look at some of those translations to see even how Viz have done because they don't even get everything right. But based on the information received so far, I think what I'm going to talk about in this video is a fair reflection of truly what happened. And I'm going to address a lot of the copiums by the Gokuists because that's mainly where it's coming from about Gohan one-shotting Goku. And oh yes, he did. And I'll even show you some scans from the Dragon Ball Super Series itself that fully support this. However, as I stated in my video only last week, this is a video I released approximately five or six days ago, as you can see it on your screen right now. I actually said that Goku can win in a fight against Beast Gohan, even if Beast Gohan has the raw power advantage. I stated this not that long ago. Hopefully, most of you watched it. I used a really good analogy about Anthony Joshua and Francis and Ganu, and how it's mainly timing and accuracy and technique that allowed Anthony Joshua to knock out his opponent. So ultimately, I won't show every scan from this actual manga chapter in this particular video. I'll show some that you may not have seen yet, but I won't show all of them. For the rest of it, I guess you'll have to take me for my word until it comes out. But guys, I have no reason to lie for you. Some people try and claim biases. I don't really have any. Merge Zamasu's my guy, and he's way out of the equation at the moment. If you are a fellow Zamasai, let me know down in the comments section. It can't just be me and only Dragon Ball leave. Just kidding. Anyway, so this chapter was wild. When you read it, if you haven't read it yet, this is a brilliant chapter, a real brilliant tribute to the passing of Akira Toriyama. In this chapter, it starts off picking up from where chapter 102 leaves off and Goku and Gohan are going at it in their ultra forms. I thought they would relocate because of the destruction happening to Beerus' planet. They didn't. <laughs> it gets more destroyed in the end. It starts off with Gohan Beast on the offensive against Ultra Instinct Goku and essentially Goku is blocking and parrying. He's pretty much completely on the defensive throughout this entire fight except for one small sequence and whilst Gohan isn't really landing anything significant at this point he is pushing Goku back. This is likely the first of many demonstrations of Gohan having more raw power than Goku of course they're both suppressed at this point. But power wise, Gohan seems to be pushing Goku back without necessarily hitting him. But Goku is using the full ability of Ultra Instinct, Master Yourself Movement, and all the hacks and abilities. As you can see, the fun title on my video. This video is very much about using skills, hacks, and experience to equalize a greater raw power. Something I've been talking about a lot on my channel throughout the years. And a lot of people are only really just starting to come to realize this is where Dragon Ball Super is truly heading. And it has been heading ever since, I guess you could say, when Hit first came onto the scene and uses time manipulating abilities to equalize Goku's greater raw power ability. So Goku then goes full power, he talks about how he's been training, how he's got stronger and then essentially attacks Gohan, landing on Gohan, literally appearing right behind him, speed blitzing Gohan essentially and landing a kick to the back. Gohan is caught completely by surprise, however this is a very clean shot. Goku has clearly used his openings exploitation that comes with Ultra Instinct as we saw in the tournament's power, Jiren talked about how Ultra Instinct exploits openings, which is a very big factor in martial arts and fighting. If you can exploit openings via timing and accuracy, your shots will literally become critical hits every time you land a hit. That is the beauty of Ultra Instinct. That is why Ultra Instinct is special. If you are fighting against Ultra Instinct Goku and your raw power levels are of similar levels to Ultra Instinct Goku and you don't have Ultra Instinct, you are in big trouble. Even if you have slightly more power than Goku, you are still likely in trouble. Ultra Instinct is an equalizer for Goku to his opponent's greater raw power. We likely saw that against Jiren. It's very plausible that Jiren had more raw power, speed and strength than Ultra Instinct Goku, but Goku's hacks, technique and abilities allowed him to keep up with Jiren, if not defeat Jiren. Obviously in the manga, it's a bit more open to interpretation than in the anime where it was basically a conclusive victory for Goku until he told out. But the main point is guys, Goku doesn't just land that kick to the back. He lands quite a few clear cut shots on Gohan and not once does Gohan revert back down to base or even to ultimate 
from Gohan Beast. He maintains his form the entire damn time. And even after this fight's finished, he then powers down and powers back up into Gohan Beast to fight against Broly. After that, Gohan Beast goes back on the offensive. Goku remains on the defensive. We know that Ultra Instinct allows him to dodge with speed hacks and gives him greater reaction time and speed. And Vegeta notes that Goku's Ultra Instinct is steering the game in his favor. So that's a statement from Vegeta stating that it's not to do with power. It's the fact that Goku has Ultra Instinct and the abilities that come with Ultra Instinct that is allowing him to get the better of Gohan at this moment. He then states he guesses there's a gap of experience between the two. Ultra Instinct is the pinnacle of martial arts abilities, I guess you could say. Obviously, there's the ladder of Ultra Instinct that comes after that, but it is a godly martial arts ability. Goku is also more experienced, he's more trained and more efficient with his power than Gohan is with his. The efficiency part that was introduced to us in Dragon Ball Super Superhero is a major component of these power scalings rankings at the moment major we need to stop downplaying it because that's also another important point that comes up later when gohan beast fights against super saiyan broly however after that statement by vegeta gohan reveals that he wasn't really going full power he then goes to full power and essentially goes back on the offensive now at this time when he's charging up broly's starting to talk about a lot of energy is gathering vegeta actually states that huge massive key can you control it all, Gohan? Because the amount of raw power reserve that Gohan has is enormous. The fact that he was even keeping up with Ultra Instinct Goku in the first place states that he was at least somewhat relative to it. He is now gathering more ki, and he is about to unleash it on Goku. And when he does, Goku does continue dodging and using the abilities of Ultra Instincts at first, but Goku clearly looks rattled by it, and Gohan is getting closer and closer. Gohan begin continues to break down Goku's defenses, eventually landing a punch on Gohan, Goku, and essentially knocking Goku back to base form. Now, even in the picture where Gohan lands the punch, you see that same imagery that we saw when Frieza knocked Goku and Vegeta out of their Ultra Forms way back in the Granola arc. It's that little circle at the back. Obviously, this is not a coloured version I'm showing you, but it is the coloured version of the Black Frieza incident. They are the same. It is literally reciprocating what we saw before, demonstrating Gohan's power to us. Goku gets knocked down to the floor. Vegeta states that Gohan with raw speed alone not even with any ultra form or ultra technique went past the evasive speed of ultra instincts not only is Gohan faster than Goku naturally he's faster than the evasive techniques of ultra instincts and the speed hacks guys you simply cannot do this if you don't have greater raw power reserves than your opponent Goku stands up is holding his face he's saying ouch 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 he's literally got tears in his eyes and says what the hell was that just now now Gohan has to use a certain technique to get the max power of his, out of his form he is not amping his power he is just using the max amount of power that he can because he doesn't have the efficiency levels yet in this form yes he can use it at will yes he's slightly trained with it but he's not to the same degree of Goku and Vegeta with their forms then that they're not as efficient as somebody like Jiren with his raw power reserves but of course Goku gets back up he doesn't look super injured but obviously he was hurt by it that can't be denied now and then he goes back into Ultra Instinct they continue fighting again and Essentially, Goku lands some sort of pushing technique against Gohan. Gohan is completely unfazed by it, but it does knock him back a little bit. But one thing you could point out in favor of Goku is, as long as Goku maintains a steady heart, then he should be growing in power anyway. As we learned in the Moro arc, his body gets sturdier to match his opponent as long as he's got a calm heart and he's trained to a certain degree and his moves should be refining as he goes along. But essentially, in terms of power, he lands on Gohan and Gohan is yet again unfazed by it now people are using the fact that goku went straight back into ultra instinct as a point of contention to the notion that gohan didn't one shot him well i'm here to tell you you're wrong gohan did one shot ultra instinct goku out of his form and people are using the fact that because he didn't knock him out rather than knock him down i would call this a knockdown rather than a knockout if we wanted to use boxing terms that that doesn't mean gohan really did what people are claiming he did and people are going out of proportion with it it's not out of proportion we did the same thing to goku in ultra instinct back at the beginning of the granola arc he knocked goku out of the form goku had to then tap back into the form but the only way to do that is with raw power and landing a, an actual shot against them we later see this again against granola where goku gets knocked out of his god form his blue form and eventually powers up into ultra instinct 
despite being overwhelmed with raw power on multiple occasions and knocked out of his form back down to base. I mean, how many times have we actually seen this in Dragon Ball now? Characters get knocked out of their form back down to base just to go back to full power again. It's not something that's new. Gohan isn't going to knock out his father. This is a sparring match. It isn't actually a serious match. They are just testing each other's powers. So I don't know why people are using the fact that Goku says it wasn't about winning at the end as any sort of means to say that Goku wouldn't, that Goku has similar raw power levels to Gohan. He doesn't. Goku does, however, have better skill, experience, and techniques than Gohan. But Gohan has the raw power advantage right now. In fact, you can even look at Goku's battle against Gas. Getting landed on by a stronger character in Ultra Instinct doesn't necessarily automatically mean he gets knocked out of the form. We know for a fact that Gas was the strongest in the universe at that point yet he landed on Goku. But it also must be noted that this is a stronger Goku than the version of Goku that Black Freeza did it to. He's not only in his silver-haired Ultra Instinct state, which is stronger than TUI, True Ultra Instinct, he has since then trained for a circa one to two years since the Granola movie events. He wasn't even out cold after being one-shotted by Freeza. He was still conscious. You don't have to knock somebody out completely for it to be a one-shot. And we even saw against Gas, Gas was literally stomping on Ultra Instinct Goku and it didn't knock him out of the for form. That just shows that the difference between Gohan and Goku is wider than it was when Gas was stronger than Ultra Instinct Goku and Gas was definitely stronger than Ultra Instinct Goku at that point. Why are people denying this? For any arguments that states he wouldn't be able to reuse Ultra Instinct if he was that, that injured, well, he kind of did against Jiren when he initially got the form. He did against... Moro when he retained that form and he did against Gas when he used his Zizano state. He was actually out cold at that point. So for any of you familiar with Deontay Wilder and the heavyweight boxing scene, Deontay Wilder is known to have one of the most devastating knockout punches known to the boxing world. However, his boxing skills over 12 rounds aren't particularly good. It was shown quite recently in his last fight against Joseph Parker, a technically sound boxer, that Joseph Parker outboxed him for all 12 rounds. But in a battle of punch offs between them, if Joseph Parker actually got caught by Deontay Wilder, it would be lights out because Deontay Wilder has more power than Joseph Parker. That's why Roshi told Goku to stop relying on movement in order to beat Jiren and it eventually led to his Ultra Instinct form. Ultra Instinct gives him superior movement skills, speed hacks, dodge hacks, critical hit hacks, exploitation of openings. Yet Vegeta simply stated that Gohan's raw speed even surpassed that. So Goku said he's checking Gohan's strength. Well, yeah, he checked it and even Vegeta noticed that Gohan was stronger in terms of raw power. However, like I said in the video last week, there are ways for Goku to win this because with his abilities, skills, experience and hacks, he can find a way to win the fight. Especially given that Gohan's trigger for using his full power in beast form, I would say is quite difficult. So Goku could win, but if he gets caught, he's going to get knocked out of his form. If it happens too many times, he ain't going to be able to get back into his form. It's more than plausible both of them were showing their full power, but still, neither of them are going to kill the other. It's not a bloodlusted match, it's a spar. If you know what a sparring match is you'll know that neither of them were really trying to truly damage their opponents now guys obviously i've given some boxing analogies i also like ufc as well but if you have any ufc analogies where you think certain situations play out in a very similar way do let me know down in the comment section but on to gohan further after that fight gohan still has enough power left to fight against broly who turns super saiyan who is a match for him in power in fact you could argue that his overall raw power could be greater just that he can't access it yet because he's stated to not be as efficient with go than gohan with his transformation that's why we see gohan tossing him around because gohan is more efficient with his power and is better trained and you could argue that the same situation applies between gohan and broly than what applied between goku and gohan in terms of experience skills and techniques this is where the series is moving now and it has been moving for quite a while in my opinion that skills and techniques do matter more than what they did come the end of z where it was really just about having more raw power than your opponent gt kind of followed in the same suit super's going backwards i guess to original Dragon Ball and more in the direction of Naruto where skills, hacks and abilities can serve as equalizers to greater raw power. The scary thing is, Beerus is likely the most powerful and has all of these skills, experience and hacks. Scary. Anyway guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I look forward to reading them. Until next time, Ad Astra.